Extensions let us add functionality to any type, including ones we made and Apple's own types too. To demonstrate this, I want to show you a new method on strings called trimming characters in. This thing removes certain characters from the start and end of a string. Things like alphanumerics or decimals only or white space is the most common. If you haven't heard the term white space before, it refers to general space you can't see on the screen, such as the space character or the tab character. It can also remove new lines, which is commonly the return key or the enter key, but there's actually no standard way of making these things, of course, and so it'll work across Mac OS, Windows, Unix, Linux, and so forth. For example, here is a string that has white space, space character, at the start and end. Multiple of these things. If we want to remove the white space, so it starts with a capital T and ends with a lowercase e, we could use so this kind of code here. Let trimmed equals quote dot trimming characters in white spaces and new lines. And that'll do it. White spaces and new lines actually comes from Apple's foundation API, which we get via Cocoa, as does trimming characters in. Like I said at the beginning, Coco, Foundation, they're really helpful. Keep them around. <laughs> anyway, having to call dot trimming characters in dot white spaces and new lines every time we want to just trim a string is a bit wordy. And so we can write an extension to make it shorter. We could say there's an extension on string with a new method called trimmed that returns the string. Inside there, we still call the same trimming characters in white spaces and new line. Duh, 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 duh we now have a trim method. So notice the extension keyword to start the extension and the type name, which one we're extending. This is on strings. We open a brace and of course the matching closing brace and all the code inside there is part of our extension. It's added to the string type. Then we have a new method inside there called trimmed, returning a new string, call the same code as before, but now we can say self dot. And that automatically refers to the current string instance, whatever you call this trimmed method on. And this is possible because we are already in our string extension. All these things apply to strings. And now everywhere we want to remove white space and new lines, we can just write let trimmed equals quote dot trimmed. And let's compare those two lines quote dot trimming characters in white spaces and new lines versus quote dot trimmed. It's much easier and it saves some typing, but is it that much better than a regular function? Well, the truth is rather than having this fancy extension, we could have written a function like this. Func trim, some string, return to string. String dot trimming characters in, da 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 da. And now we call trim quote. And that's actually less code than the extension, extension, both in terms of writing it and calling it. This kind of function is called a global function. It's available everywhere in our code. However, using the extension has several benefits over the global function, including code completion. When we type quote dot, Xcode brings up a list of all methods and properties on that string, including all the ones we added in extensions. This makes our functionality easier to find. Also, code organization. If you write global functions, it makes your code rather messy. They're hard to organize, hard to keep track of, and worse. On the other hand, extensions are naturally grouped by the type of data they apply to. You group them by strings or by ints or by doubles or whatever you want to. And third, internal access. Because your extension methods are a full part of the original type, as if they were added there in the first place, they get full access to the type's internal data. That means they can use properties and methods with otherwise restrictive access control settings. What's more, these kinds of extensions make it easier to modify values in place, to change a value directly rather than return a new value. For example, we have this trimmed thing before, we can instead write trim and make it call trimmed our other extension method internally. But now trim is marked mutating because it applies result of trimmed back to self. 
self equals self dot trimmed. So it calls our previous trimmed extension method and assigns the result back to self, which it can do because it's mutating. And this means we can modify the string directly by calling quote dot trim. It's a variable, so it'll remove the white space, put it back into quote, so it removes the white space directly. Now notice how the method now has slightly different names. We had self.trimmed when we turned a value, and trim when we put it in place. And this is intentional. It's actually part of Swift's naming guidelines. They're really, really clear how you should name your methods here. If you're turning a new value, rather than trying to change it in place, you should use word endings like ed or ing. For example, trimmed or reversed. You know, previously I showed you the sorted method. Now you know this rule, you should probably realize if you have a variable array of strings or ints, you can call sort on it, not sorted, but sort to sort the array in place. Change my current value to be sorted rather than making a new array that's sorted. You can also use extensions to add properties, but there is one rule they must only be computed properties, not stored properties. The reason for this is it's actually fairly straightforward. Adding new stored property would affect the actual size of the type of data. You're struck to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so if we added a bunch of stored properties to things like ints, for example, all integers everywhere in iOS would suddenly require more storage everywhere. And that would be a huge disaster. It would cause all sorts of problems. Fortunately, we can still get a lot done with computed properties. They are just code. There's no storage behind them. For example, there's one property I like to add to strings called lines. And this breaks the string up by line breaks using another method called components separated by. And it then breaks up by that by a boundary you specify, like new lines or white space if you want to, and then uh, returns that whole string array. Let's do an Xcode, it's easy to see. Uh, we'll say uh, inside our string extension, var lines returns an array of string. And we'll send back self.components separated by dot new lines, like this. So this breaks the string up on a boundary of our choosing. So da 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 break, da 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 break, da 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 break, and so forth. And here the boundary is any kind of line break. So whenever you find a line break, make a new array element, new one, new one, new one, new one, new one. So if you've got 20 lines of text, you'll get back 20 in your string array. And to show off, we could go down here and say, uh, let lyrics equals a multi-line string. Let's do, but I keep cruising, can't stop, won't stop moving. It's like I got this music in my mind saying it's gonna be all right. A little bit, I shake it off for you. And now we can say uh, print lyrics dot lines, our extension, dot count. How many lines of text were in that? I run that code back. And of course the answer is four. Four lines came back. Now whether they're single lines of code or complex pieces of functionality, extensions always have the same underlying goal. To make your code easier to write, easier to read, and easier to maintain in the long term. And before we're done, I wanna show you one really useful trick when working with extensions. Um, you've seen previously how Swift automatically generates a member-wise initializer for structs. For example, I could say a struct called book, let title uh, string, let page count int, and let reading hours int. And if I had let LOTR equals a book, I'll get initialized with title, page count, reading hours. Title is Lord of the Rings, page count 1178, reading hours a full day. Now, I also mentioned that if you create your own custom initializer inside this struct, 
Swift will no longer automatically provide the member wise one for us, which is intentional. So custom initializer means we want to assign data based on some custom logic. For example, we might say I want to have an initializer that takes only a title string and a page count int. Inside there, title is title, page count is page count. But we'll do reading hours is equal to page count divided by 50, for example. So we've got now some rule for calculating reading hours. Don't tell me how long it takes. I'll do that for you. And you'll see it's complaining. You can't specify reading hours anymore. We've lost the initializer. Because if Swift were to keep the memberwise initializer by default, it would skip our logic for calculating the number of reading hours. That do its own random one, which is not what we want. However, sometimes you do want both. You want the ability to have your own custom initializer with some special logic, but also retain Swift's automatic memberwise initializer. In the situation, it's worth knowing what Swift is doing. If we implement a custom initializer inside our struct, Swift will disable the automatic memberwise initializer. That little extra detail inside our struct should give you a hint of what's coming next. If we implement the custom initializer inside an extension, Swift won't disable the automatic memberwise initializer, which makes sense if you think about it, right? You know, if adding a new initializer inside an extension disabled the default initializer, one small change from us could just break all sorts of random other Swift code. So if we wanted our book struct to have the default memberwise initializer, as well as our custom title page count initializer, we'd place this custom one inside an extension, extension book, and place it in there, the same code. And now we can have the memberwise version you see here, but also if I do a new book, you'll see we have the title page count version as well.